It's playoff time at East Los Angeles College from Monterey Park, California, inside the South Gym. This is the second round of the Southern California Regional Playoffs as the pride of East LA take on the Cerritos College Falcons. The 2022 California Community College Athletic Association Championships continue here on SportsNetUSA.net. Thankful and grateful you could join us. I'm Dan Gudino. This is gonna be such a blast. We just witnessed a great ball game on the women's side. The women coming up with a 59-57 victory. A buzzer beater shot to end the game. Kimball Gray able to drain a shot to win it for the Lady Huskies here. The men trying to advance into the Sweet 16. And the young men have been playing superb basketball. And they have a long list of accomplishments that make a great resume this year. They have a 24 and four record. They're undefeated in conference and crowned champions of the South Coast Conference North yet again for a sixth straight time. East LA comes into the playoffs as the number seven seed. Here we are inside the E arena where Coach Mosley and the Huskies play lights out. In the Mosley era inside the South Gym, the Huskies are 71 and 10. That's 71 wins, only 10 losses in here. So 87% of the time, a coach John Mosley led team is going to win here at East Los Angeles. And so it's playoff time here for the Huskies. The Huskies need to be aware, be aware of what happened on Tuesday where the underdog, the lower seeds, won four of the six first round SoCal Regional games. We had a team in the number 22 Copper Mountain that shocked number 11 LA Southwest. LA Southwest shared this year's conference championship with tonight's Cerritos Falcons. Both were out of the SEC North. And so titles don't matter at this point of the season. Throw stats and accolades out of the window. All that doesn't matter. A brand new season, it's playoff time for the Huskies. So East LA cannot look past against Cerritos. This is the second time both teams meet this season. Elac got the first win back in November. Elac won 75 to 69. Cerritos crept around the whole game with excellent three point shooting, but the Husky size proved to be the difference. 84% of all the production for the Huskies in their first game came inside the box. Despite 10 three point bombs by Cerritos, Elac escaped on the road 75 to 69. That game was back in November. So Cerritos could get streaky at times with crisp shooting. So when we come back, starting lineups for both squads, Huskies, Falcons, round two of the playoffs coming up here on SportsNetUSA.net. Huskies, 
representing East Los Angeles College. At point guard, out of Long Beach of St. Anthony, wearing number five, Damani Whitlock. Damani will get his 20th start of the at season. Two guard position, a 6'5 freshman on a Stevenson Ranch. Corey Cofield. Corey Cofield coming in with some hardware into this one. Named Player of the Year in the South Coast Conference North. Des Washington making his 48th appearance in the Husky Green. Ty Hunt named first team. SEC North. Josh Phillips gets his 24th start of the game. Thankful and grateful you could join us. Dan Gudino here alongside Serwin D. Haynes. Huskies come in as the number seven seed. Taking on the number 10 Cerritos Falcons. And then we'll be trying to keep an eye on that San Diego Miramar West LA game as people know if San Diego Miramar wins and, Hus and the Huskies win tonight, we'll be back here Saturday for the third round. Of it's gonna be a long shot because the Wildcats of West LA, the number two team in SoCal. We're underway, round two fight. <laughs> Those Street Fighter reference, I like it. Cerritos with the basketball here, just underway inside E Arena, where the Huskies are near unbeatable. Shores will launch it way off the mark. Saved inbounds, shot clock violation. A turnover against Cerritos in the first possession, 19 minutes. 28 seconds. Already you're seeing the big man Joshua Phillips playing some good defense on the perimeter. Also the Huskies uh, kept the Falcons out, out of the paint there. Here's Corey Cofield to the corner to Washington. He'll lift for three. Too strong on that attempt. That was Dorian Harris who slipped. That shores again from the corner. Too strong. In the playoffs, Shooting could go cold at times. It can, and Huskies got a little, uh, yeah, Des Washington got caught uh, off balance, stepped on the line. Huskies, I think they actually got a little lucky with their three point because they, they lost uh, the, the shooter there on the corner, baseline corner. So still no score. Here's Jalen Shores, an all SEC South player. Cerritos has three. First teamers on their squad. Three point attempt by Harris. That's a three pointer. 3 0. Cerritos will open up the scoreboard. First shot of the game made, but second open three pointer given up by the Huskies. Here's Whitlock who got the start. Whitlock always so tough. Here's Washington. Back outside a tie. Hunt asking for somebody, gets it over to. Whitlock, Whitlock will launch it way off. 3-0 ball game, 18.05 on the game clock. The Cerritos there, good job of defending the Huskies on the perimeter, wouldn't let the Huskies get into the paint, where Huskies like to do their damage, particularly Tyrell Hunt, who I believe got called on that foul there, reaching in on Dennis Johnson. So this is the ninth time that the Huskies have made the playoffs in the Coach John Mosley era. Ball number 24, Tyrell Hunt. The last time the Huskies were in the playoffs, we go back to the 2019-2020 season. That was, of course, canceled due to the pandemic. They were supposed to play Santa Rosa. And as you, everyone now saw on last year's uh, series of Last Chance Shoot, the Huskies were on the bus, and the bus was literally about minutes away from taking off. I had thought the bus had already taken off, but the bus was about to take off where Coach came in and called him back. Barnhill gets stripped. No, he gets fouled. Corey Cofield thought he came up with the steal. Instead, Cofield will be charged. 
That's the second team foul against East LA. 3-0 ball game, 17 minutes, 46 seconds in the game clock. I guess they're saying maybe he raked them across the arm, the forearm, or the arm there. We can try to steal that ball. There's Shores, rainbows it way on top to Johnson. Malik Johnson is a second teamer. He was named to the South Coast Conference South squad. Here's Belvin, has to go back to Harris. Harris, too strong. Another opportunity for Cerritos. 17.25 on the game clock, a fresh shot clock for the Falcons here. Ball kind of fell, Aaron. Oh, good blitz there by the Huskies on the double team. Here's Whitlock from the wing to the lane. Actually, good control because he wasn't quite uh, lined up for that layup, but he kept good body control going up, and he got the layup to fall. One point lead for the Falcons, three to two, 17.05 left. First half. That, that blitz there by Phillips is like a, a cornerback blitz getting home in football. This is round two action of the playoffs. On Tuesday, as we get a carry called against Belvin and the Falcons turnover against Cerritos at the 16:54 mark. On Tuesday in the playoffs, four of the six games, the underdog won. So don't count out Cerritos here. They are the number 10 team in the SoCal Regional. And of course, the Huskies have experience of being knocked out in this round. Here, Ty Hunt double clutches. Way off on that attempt. Here's Belvin. Belvin going coast to coast. Will pull up at the free throw area. Extends the lead for Cerritos. Five to two ball game. 16-20 left to a cutting Whitlock. Whitlock through the contact. Can't get it to fall. But he'll get two at the line with 16-21 to go. Good cut pass there by the South Coast Conference North Player of the Year, Corey Cofield. Interesting uh, selection because really, you know, the Huskies, they really balanced scoring up and down the card, up and down the lineup. First free throw is good. So it was tough choice for the powers that be for the SEC North, but they went with Cofield, the player of the year. That's a great choice. Yeah. It's hard to go wrong with, with, with at least half this lineup, and that free throw rims out. 5-3 ball game, Cerritos on top. Wouldn't call this an upset if it does happen. Cerritos a formidable squad, led by Russ May in his 13th season. And there's a drive on the right side, that's Fields drawing contact against Josh Phillips, the 35 jersey of East LA, 16-04. On the clock. Now, we've seen in the past few weeks, late in the season, big man, seven foot one, Brian Penn Johnson, come off the bench and, and unleashed at certain times of the game. And as someone who's not going to find any, face any opposition defensive pressure because there's not any, anyone else, seven foot one, that he's going to go against. You wonder if Moses, when Moses is going to decide to pull the trigger on Penn Johnson, that free throw is missed. Up ahead to Cofield. Cofield stops behind the arc, back outside Whitlock. Whitlock barks into play. Inside of Cofield. Cofield through the contact. Falls on his bottom, but he'll get two at the line. Whitlock kind of returns the favor on a nice uh, cutting pass into the baseline. So before that historic Two run in 2020, in which the Huskies had a 29-1 record, going into the state tournament with 25 straight victories. Prior to that, through 2017 and 2019, the Huskies were knocked out in the second round, one and done. So, I mean, you can make a case that maybe that that 21-9-1 team was a few years in the making. You know, Coach Mosley to, to develop this program as that free throw bounces around and drops in. We're tied at five all then. 15-50 first half. There's Fields, Huskies applying a press. Shores gets ripped from behind, Whitlock. Poking it out straight into the hands of Cofield. Down low to Phillips, poor entry pass. That foul happened on the floor. So Andre Fields will be charged there. That's the third team foul against 
Cerritos, three fouls apiece as Barnhill will check in and Fields will step off. That's his second. I guess that's why Phillips couldn't, field, couldn't catch that ball cleanly. Down low to Cofield. Cofield gets rejected. That'll be a jump ball possession arrow in favor of the Huskies. So it'll remain here on this end. Jump ball arrow to Eli. Next jump ball will go to Cerritos. 15 minutes, 33 seconds. Dan Gudino alongside Sirwin D. Haynes here on Sportsnet USA. That's all brought to you by NutriShop of Monterey Park. Your sports nutrition, weight loss, and vitamin experts. Here's Dez. Washington will inbound. Look in, who have to hurry, gets it into the hands of Phillips. Jumper from 16 feet out, no. Gets poked at its highest point. Dez Washington went up to get it. He got fouled, I believe. Yeah. So, call that on Juice Belvin. What great name, Juice. Juice, Juice Belvin. I like that. So four of team fouls now against Cerritos. Here's Washington once again. Into the hands of Hunt. Hunt backing down his defender. Fade away. Shot is pure. We, we talked about Tyrell Hunt's uh, mid-range game. And shots like that, being able to hit shots like that, uh, it, it's almost next level stuff, especially t turnaround jumpers like it that. It truly is. That jumper is very pro style, super clean. He's got the cleanest jump shot on the Husky squad. Here's Johnson, he'll lift for his own shot. Hunt with the rebound, he'll have to slow it down. He doesn't have numbers. He gets ripped from behind. And yeah, I think he fouled, yeah, he, yeah. he fouled. Hunt in frustration. Oh, and that's the thing, you know, Hunt's not a point. He's more of a wing player, but you have to know as, as a bigger man, that you have to watch out for those little small pesky guards because as you're trying to pull up your dribble and look for your guard to pass to, your lead guard to pass to, those pesky guards on the, on the opposite, they're gonna look to poke the ball away. So when you look, while you're looking for your guard, you gotta keep an eye out for the opposition's guards. Des Washington will take a seat. JT Langston inserted. Josh Phillips will take a seat. The big man, Penn Johnson, into the game. Good ball distribution by Cerritos. The drive, the kick out to Barnhill. Barnhill gets rejected, good. Defense by Penn Johnson, and the ball gets last touched by a Falcon. Husky basketball, 14 minutes, 30 seconds to go as Whitlock will sit out. Justin Gladney, the Fairfax product, checks in. Now, at this level, obviously, it's not all about athleticism, but that was an example right there where Husky showed superior athleticism as there is a... <laughs> I believe Cofield Jason, travel. No, I, I thought that was a turnover. It looks like it's Joe. Travel. Oh, yeah, travel by on, on, J, on, yeah, on JT Langston. I saw it on, he, he got called for it, and then the, the grimace on his face told it all. But that defensive stand there was, was actually uh, displayed superior athleticism because actually Cerritos got to the cup and got to the, to the marker in the paint before the Huskies get, and they were able to get the shot off before the Huskies could react. Chenault will walk. The double team comes in. Penn Johnson makes his presence felt. Turnover, Husky basketball now. 14 minutes, 10 seconds. Coaches are looking for Penn Johnson to be more impactful. And he started to do so in the latter half of the season. Here's Justin Gladney, pushes it to Sanders. Sanders holding it to Cofield. Cofield on the baseline. Oh, he stepped on it. Yeah, touches. The sideline, so turnover against East LA. Seven to five still, Huskies with a thin lead. 13 minutes, 54 seconds. He was looking for that spin move to get uh, a clear path to the lane on the baseline, but lost sight of his footing. Huskies applying the press. They'll follow the Falcons into the front court. That's Chenault swinging it left side to Belvin. Belvin gets dropped. Yes, and that's the second foul against Cofield. Let's see if Coach Mosley elects to take him out. No, that's actually on Sanders, my, my fault. Four team fouls apiece as Demetrius Callip will check in. Corey Cofield will sit down. And this substitution is important because Callip is one of the guys off the bench that can shoot, that shoots threes for the Huskies. So now a, a bit of a different element for the Huskies offense. Which team will advance to the Sweet 16? Three-point shot, Chenault, no. Callip, rebound. 
Sanders in there as well. Baseline jumper, too strong. Penn Johnson gets it. Johnson loses it, gets ripped. Belvin comes up with it, 13-15 left. Physical game, Barnhill fakes. Open corner Chenault three. again. Three point shot is good. Eight, seven, Falcon lead. I have to say so far in this early going, that corner three has, has been there for the Falcons. Sanders, runner, too strong, tips it himself. And out of bounds. Yeah, it goes sailing out of bounds, and so Cerritos basketball now. You know, does it feel in a way that the Huskies are not quite under control here, you know, physically? You know, they, they get, they're quick. They're getting, up, they're, getting, they're getting the hops. They're getting to the ball, but they're still not quite in rhythm and sync just yet. 12.53 left, first half. If you're just joining us, who will enter the Sweet 16? We're waiting to see who wins in the West LA versus San Diego Miramar game as JT Langston will come up with the steal. Ahead to Caleb, bounce pass inside. Justin Glatney, left side, layup, good. And that was a smart layup because the defender was on his right side, so he used his right arm to kind of shield the defender, used his offhand to put the layup in, so smart play. 9-8, Husky lead, 12-15 on the game clock. Here's Boykins pushing it left side to Belvin. Belvin against Sanders. Sanders chasing him. Swings it left. That's Stevens. Barnhill back on top to Belvin. Belvin attacking. Has to kick out. Three seconds on the ticker. Chenault, the lefty, too strong. Loose ball. Penn Johnson can't get it. Second opportunity for the Falcons. The scrappy Falcons staying alive here. 11.45 left. That is one uh, liability with having Penn Johnson in there because he's long and lanky, but. Stevens will launch it. Does that count? No, no it'll be it waved off. off as Barnhill will be charged with the foul underneath the rim, dropping Demetrius on his back. So a turnover against the, the Falcons at the 11.35 mark. Glad you could join us here on Sportsnet USA, 3C2A. Championships are underway. SoCal Regional here. This is the 7 10 game in the bracket where West LA is the highest seed. Here's Gladney, well defended by Chenault. Gets a screen over to Langston. Langston will lift. Rims mm. out. 9 8 still, 11 15 to go. Here's Belvin. Back on top to Fields. Fields against Penn Johnson. The kick out gets poked out of bounds by Gladney. Falcon basketball still at the 11.07 mark. A good heads up play by Gladney to get his hands on it. Oh, well, it looks like um, Coach Cerritos Russ is May. Call 30, yeah. Yeah. Russ May will call timeout with 11.07 okay, to go. Huskies 9. Cerritos Falcons 8 here on SportsNetUSA.net. Do you want to circle the starter? Yeah, the same one. Eleven oh seven to go in this first half. Nine eight lead for the Huskies. Huskies at home in the Coach John Mosley era. Seventy one and ten. So eighty seven percent of the time, a Husky team wins here inside E Arena. Indeed, indeed. You know, we just saw the women's game, and you know, we're talking about the women's basketball team. The Huskies they tend to have the first quarter of the game where they're just kind of slow on offense, kind of feeling things out. That's what the men are doing. Seems like they're doing right now kind of feeling things out a little bit. They're not quite in rhythm, letting their defense carry things. Harris will splash a three. Of course, the defense didn't carry it that time. 11 to nine, 10 45 left. Especially in a tight game, the one thing you don't want to do is keep giving up shots on the perimeter. Gladney will float her. Too strong, 
Penn Johnson tries to poke it as Sanders instead. Belvin will come up with it. The attack by Boinkins gets st stolen. Gallup into the front court. Pushes it to the corner. Poor pass at the 10-25 mark. Cerritos 11, Huskies 9 still. I think he's looking for Penn Johnson, but actually uh, Andre Fields was kind of fronting Penn Johnson, was in front of them, so he didn't have the angle to receive that pass. Boykins now bringing the ball up. Against Callup. We'll hand off to Belvin. Belvin and all SCC South player. 10-10 left. Offensive A push foul. off by Belvin. Callup does a great job of selling it. And a turnover <laughs> against the Falcons. 10.07 left first half, 11-9 still. You Falcons said it. in the lead. You, you said it, it did look like a bit of an acting job there. But if you could draw the foul, you could draw the foul right there. <laughs> Gladney across the logo with 10 minutes to go. Pushes it left side, that's Sanders. To the elbow to Langston. Langston puts it on the floor. Down low to Penn Johnson. It caroms to Callup. He's off on, on the attempt. Here's Boykins. 9.44 left. Almost turned that one over. From the corner, too strong. Sanders comes down. Sanders against Boykin. Sanders, friendly roll. 11 all. One of the rare times Huskies were able to uh, square up and attack the basket so far in this game, early in this game. Here's Chanel defended by Callip. Callip with a neon green shoe and a highlight, highlighter pink shoe. Some style. Here's Fields, too strong. Chenault gets rejected by Penn Johnson. As Des Washington will check in, Sanders will check Here's out. Chenault will sit out for the Falcons. As the four jersey, Malik Johnson is inserted for the Falcons. This is Shores with 8.55 left. Boykins now. Gets a screen by Fields. Two Fields. Throws it up poorly. Loose just ball. Sealed them off on the perimeter on the baseline there. That's Gladney. 11 all right here. Callip. Spin move. Nearly losing the dribble here. Yeah, yeah, they call it oh, carry. Because it looked like he, he looked like he had actually stopped this dribble and then picked it and then kind of picked it up again, but they called a carry. I actually thought he was, he was open for a moment on the far uh, corner there. He could have shot that three. Score remains stuck at 11 all. 8.35 left. A defensive effort right now, Dan. Both teams. So the Huskies come in with 16 straight wins. Doesn't matter. It's playoff time. Yep. Here's Shores against Washington. They switch off. Yeah, they and put them on the baseline. Good defense. Yep. Husky oh. basketball, 8-16 left, 11 all. And you're seeing signs here of a war of defensive attrition. And I think in, in a game like that, I, I would favor the Huskies because they have more, I feel like they have more talent, have more offensive talent. And sooner or later, they're going to get a shot to fall. They're going to get the ball inside to Penn Johnson. Ball got knocked out by the Falcons there, but they're going to find Penn Johnson eventually. Yeah, the Fields is doing a great job on Penn Johnson, backing him down. Justin Stevens in for the Falcons. 8.03 left. Fields 6'8". He's yielding five inches to Penn Johnson. Back outside of Gladney. Gladney asking for a screen, gets it. Goes around it. Spinning, back outside, that's Langston. Langston gets ripped. Good anticipation Harris. there by the Falcons. Shores gets rejected by Langston. Penn Johnson ahead. Rich Wilson for three. Good. First three of the game for the Huskies. Richard Wilson off the bench. One of those Huskies can, can shoot the three. Gives the Huskies a bit of a different dimension to their offense. Rich Wilson in the state shooting 
53% from behind the arc. That ranks him number 10 in the state. 7.20 left, Huskies on top, 14-11. Here's Shores, over to Harris. Fields attacks, left alone, and a block by Penn Johnson. Gladney saving it. Ahead is Gladney. We got a whistle before oh, the call. Oh, wow. you know what? He, when Gladney was penetrating, he stuck his arm out to try to ward off the defender. I bet that's what he got called for. So a stiff arm gone wrong for the Huskies <laughs> at the 702 mark. Huskies 14, Cerritos 11. Yeah, wrong square. You know, stiff arm works when you're running the ball in football, but not quite when you're trying to dribble past defenders. You can't shove them. So six fouls apiece. Also, I think that maybe the arm was a little too, uh, a little too animated when he stuck that arm out. Maybe if it was a little bit more uh, cautious and sneaky, he might not have been caught with that. There's Fields against Whitlock. Whitlock got the start at point guard this evening. That's Fields driving. Good shot there. Yeah, he, good scoop layup. Good, good, good uh, uh, scoop layup to elude the long arms of Penn Johnson. Cofield will bounce it in to Penn Johnson. Johnson backing down Fields. Easy layup. Size matters. Especially when you know how to use it. And right there, he, he, good footwork. Back this man down. Got the angle to the rim. And ball. Yeah, they're going to call a foul. Penn Johnson definitely is going to be an X factor into the playoffs. When shooting goes dead cold in the playoffs, what do you do? You go inside. You rely on the big guys. Penn Johnson doing that on that end. As the Huskies lead 16-13 with 6.20 to go. Now, the counter to that, if you're, if you're the opponent, is, okay, you know what? We're going to deny it. We're going to work to deny the passing lanes to Penn Johnson. We're going to clog up those passes, those, in, those entry, those lanes into entry passes into him, so that we don't give the Husky guards a clear lane, a clear look to get that clean, clean pass into their big man. Cerritos goes one of two at the line. Chenault inserted. Shores will take a seat. There's Whitlock into the front court, hands it off to Rich Wilson. Wilson attacking the lane, the layup, no. Penn Johnson there, can't get it to go in. He's disappointed at himself, but he'll go to the line now. Foul called on Andre Fields, who's been to, this, to, to date uh, battling pretty well against uh, Penn Johnson. It's not easy when you're yielding five inches uh, to your defender, especially when you're playing the center position. First free throw, good, good, good touch on that free throw by Penn Johnson. I spoke with Coach John Mosley last night, and he talked about finding a balance as far as who to get into the game mm -hmm. because he's never had a team this deep, ever, he mentioned. Mm -hmm. Every single position has two to three players that could play. You look at the center position with Penn Johnson in there shooting free throws. You got Joshua Phillips who starts, and then Christian Oliver who comes off the bench and produces at a high level as well. The Oliver, the 6'11 freshman out of Maranatha, who not only 6'11 is that free throws missed, but has the three-pointer in his arsenal too. Play a little stretch five or stretch four. Hope we'll see more of him uh, next year. 5.55 left. With the ball, it's Johnson over to Barnhill. 10 seconds on the ticker now. Cerritos will have to hurry here. Whitlock playing lockdown defense. Four seconds to go. Four seconds. Johnson will lift. Oh, they caught him. No. Oh, 24 seconds. Oh, okay. I... That's the second time Cerritos gets caught. Without looking at the clocks, 17 to 15, 5.37 left, partner. I was worried because I thought from my vantage point, it looked like Penn Johnson might have hit the shooter on the, on the hand. But again, the shot collation happened before the shot. So all good. So game clock stuck at 5.32 with Whitlock now in the bonus. Another element of that war for defensive attrition is now 
Huskies have the Falcons in the penalty. It's still a good amount of time left in this first half. You know, over five and a half minutes to go, Dan. So, chance for Huskies to tack on uh, some, some, some freebies here with the clock stopped. And an attrition, war for attrition, every little point you go from a two point lead to the free throws good, a three, four point lead, you get another stop, maybe get, get back down the court, draw another foul, you have to go back to the line now, that, that four becomes a five, six point lead. So those, all those little one to two point uh, points accumulated per trip on the free throw line, even though you're not maybe not getting, getting the ball through the net shot wise, but it adds up, especially in a, in a game like this. So 19-15, Dan. 5.30 left. Cofield getting knocked out by Barnhill. Clean screen from the corner. That shores rattles home a three. That, that open three is created by that clean screen. There's Whitlock back on top to Phillips. Here's the player of the year of the South Coast Conference back outside to Rich, Rich Wilson in and out. Brought in by Johnson. Johnson ahead. Under five minutes now. Tight ball game inside the arena. Johnson angles. Floater no. Langston rebound. 445 left. The lob inside too strong. Missed time. Shores now ahead. He'll pull up from 19, short on that attempt. Phillips reels it in. I don't know if that was smart on his on his part to try to just shoot the pull up Jay, maybe instead of waiting for this. this Down low to Langston. To come back. To a cutting Cofield. The connection works. The assist by Langston, good. 21, 18, four minutes, 10 seconds left. I'm talking about someone that needs the ball, see the ball fall through the hoop. Cofield, even though he's not uh, outside shooter, but he's really springing and bouncy around the around the baseline. I mean, on the paint. Barnhill trying to back down Phillips, and he walks before he does a double shot, yeah. double hop step. Three fifty six left. Twenty one eighteen Huskies on top. Excellent crowd tonight, Dan. We're actually full on both sides of the of the bleachers here. What do you think? Two hundred plus. Easy. Attendance. Oh, yeah. There's Wilson. Stops at the elbow. Langston fakes. He'll pull up. Switch. Flicks his wrist. Splashes the net. And a 23-18 lead for the Huskies. JT Langston, another guy similar to Cofield, who's springy and has a nose for the ball in the paint area. So to see him step outside to hit an 18-footer, that's, that's a good sign. And Turnover. Rich Wilson disrupting Malik Johnson on the far side. As John Sanders will check in, Rich Wilson will get a rest. Johnny Sanders in for 323 left. The last time these two teams played was November the 27th of last year. Here's Langston. Doesn't get the tomahawk. But he, that was a great adjustment mid-air to change that tomahawk dunk to a layup. Draws the foul, layup is good, and he's at the line for the three-point play, Dan. Smart adjustment there by JT Langston. And there's your first kind of major uh, blow, if you call it like a, a boxing match. That's the first real stinging blow that's landed in this game as the Huskies uh, Drawing and one now, JT Langston at the line for one. Langston off the mark. Score remains 25-18 in this first half. 3.05 left now. Cofield picking up Boykins. That's outside to Harris. Harris too strong, loose ball. Picked up by Shores of Cerritos. Back on top to Chenault with 2.50 left. Fresh shot clock for the Falcons. That's Fields. Oh, good fake, good fake handoff there, but Huskies denied a shot down low. 2.35 left. There's Whitlock. 
Dribbles to the corner. Will angle towards the free throw area outside of Sanders. Sanders attacks, throws it up. No good, but the foul stays on this side of the court. Looks like it's going to be on the Falcons. Yep, that foul is going to be on Andre Fields. Foul on Andre Fields. 2.26 to go. Here's another example of how the Huskies' uh, athleticism, I would say even superior athleticism, helped them out on defense. Now, that was Andre Fields. He, that was a fake handoff on the other side. A fake handoff. It actually fooled the Huskies because Fields actually had a lane to the basket that he took. But because of the Huskies' athleticism, and uh, they were able to recover and deny Fields a clean look at the very end. And that free throw was missed. By so the road to state for Cerritos runs through East L.A. Cerritos had a tough loss to Long Beach February the 11th, which proved to be costly. That cost the Falcons' chance to win the SEC South outright. As Sanders makes it a 26-18 ball game. 2.20 left, first half. Shores against Sanders, pushes it to Chenault. That's Barnhill. No handoff to Belvin. 15 seconds on the ticker, 2.10 left on the game clock. 10 seconds on the ticker now. Barnhill will launch a three, too strong. Phillips comes down with it. Pushes it to Sanders on the far side. A minute 50 left now. You can hear Coach John Mosley yelling in the play. It's also yelling for them to hurry up. There's Cofield going around. Looks like they try to get a screen there. Eight seconds to go. Phillips too strong. Gets a putback attempt. No. Belvin comes down with it. <laughs> Belvin attacks. Coast to coast gets rejected. Yeah, that, that's going to oh, be a goaltending. Goaltending against yeah. Penn Johnson. Yeah, that ball was just on its way down as Penn Johnson got his hand on it. Would have been the third block by Penn Johnson. Not the case. And you know Phillips is kicking himself for missing that bunny uh, on the other end. So the Huskies go in with size now. You see Phillips inbounding the ball. He's listed at 6'10". Then you got the big boy Penn Johnson listed at 7'1". So Huskies go in with size. They try to lob it to Phillips. Poor pass by Whitlock. But they're bailed out there by... Oh, no, they weren't bailed out. It was knocked out of bounds. So. Yeah, knocked out of bounds by the Huskies. So Cerritos basketball with a minute 21 to go. 26 to 20. Huskies on top. Low scoring affair. Second round of the playoffs here. SoCal Regional for a chance to enter the Sweet 16. Here's Belvin. Will lift for three. Whips the net there. Three point ball game now. Huskies 26. Cerritos now with 23. Under a minute to go. And credit Cerritos because it looked like a oh, poor shot, but Penn Johnson got the offensive board. Put back, no good. Second hand chance, second chance chance. Good. 28-23, Dan. Brian Johnson. Under 40 seconds now. So give us a those credit. It looked like as the Huskies were making a move to slowly build the lead. Oh, sweet Phillips shot comes block. in soaring sweet into block. the picture. What a block by Phillips. Can't Huskies cross relying body. on size there. Can't cross body, cross court almost on that one. No shot clock now, so the Huskies get the hole for one. Last shot. 15 seconds to go. We'll see what Coach Mosley drew up. Attacking the lane as Sanders draws contact. Chenault Sanders called was able. for a foul. Sanders was able to get momentum in at the very last minute in the paint. He was able to get a step. So he would have had at least a half a body length uh, advantage to the cup, to the rim there. Sanders off on the first one. Huskies beat Cerritos 75 to 69 back in November. In that ball game, Penn Johnson had 13 points. Sanders also had 13. He's at the line right now. Second free throw, good. Second one falls in. Five point lead for the Huskies. Eight seconds to go. Here's Belvin. 
two seconds. Deep three, 25 footer, no good, it's halftime. Huskies and the Falcons go into the locker room as the Huskies lead it. 29-23 in the second round of the SoCal Regional. Dan Gudino here alongside Sir Wendy Haynes. Fun ball game so far. It's a very fun ball game. And I, I think that the Huskies, you, you can make a case that the Huskies have the Falcons right where they want them, even though it's only, only a six point lead. But the Falcons haven't shown the ability to put forth a bunch of points to go on a little run, four or five, six points uh, in a row. So if the Huskies can grind out possessions where, or stretches of, of clock where they can go maybe two minutes in a clock and get you know five or six points to the Falcons two or three, you know, eventually you're going to look up and the Huskies going to eventually have a double-digit lead in a game that is a defensive struggle, in a game where they're not allowing the Falcons to breathe much offensively. So that's a look to see how the Huskies uh, respond offensively in the start of the second half. We'll step aside. This is Sportsnet, USA.net. We'll come back in about 15 minutes. Moments away from the start of the second half. Back inside E-Rena here on SportsNetUSA.net from Monterey Park, California on the campus of East LA College. Thankful and grateful you could join us for some 3C2A playoff basketball. I'm Dan Goodino alongside Serwin D. Haynes. Huskies up 29-23 as we take a look at the stat sheet partner. The thing that stands out the most, only three players able to score for the Cerritos Falcons. Yeah, everyone else is overs. Uh, the only scorers, Juice Belvin, three of four, Jalen Shores, one out of five, and Dorian Harris, four of nine. He's hit three of five from three, though. So that's the one guy I would say he leads all the scores and other points. That's the one guy I would say the Huskies need to key on 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 on, on defense to keep him off that run him off the perimeter, keep him off, keep him catching clean, getting clean, clean looks, especially from that corner right there that he's hit two out of so far. Uh, looking at the Huskies on the Husky side, it's been very a bit paltry, but also uh, shared a wealth. Uh, two Huskies have hit two shots, and a bunch of Huskies hit one shot, and that's it. So on the floor for the Huskies, Hunt, Cofield, Whitlock, Washington, and Phillips who grabs a steal. Just ripping it out of the hands of Barnhill. So good start to the second half for the Mean Green Huskies. Huskies coming in on a 16 game win streak. Looking to advance to the Sweet 16. Washington now bounces it to Hunt on the elbow. They're swinging it right side of Cofield, back to Hunt. Hunt puts it on the floor once, now to a cutting. Cofield double clutching. Phillips trying to go back up. Easy hook shot. Extends the lead. 31, 23, 19, 10 to go. See, I'm from the fall because this is a lineup where, where the Huskies need to rely on getting into the paint. So if I'm the Falcons, I'm trying to keep them out of the paint. Barnhill will launch. Splash. Get it. 31-26 so down. And that's one thing that can keep the Falcons in it if they can hit that, keep hitting the three-pointers. Washington will launch his own. No. 18-40 like left. Looks like his body was leaning to the left a bit when he went up for that three-pointer. I don't think he was square. It's Jalen Shores pushing it to Belvin. Belvin asking for a screen. Instead will negate the screen. Goes left side, pulls up from 19. Too strong. Hunt will bring it in. 18-20 left, 31-26 Huskies. Baseline dribble drive, it's Washington. Poor attempt there. Last touch by a Falcon though, so it remains in the Huskies' favor here with 18-17 yeah. to go. Yeah, he was blocked by the, the bottom of the backboard there. Maybe if he had tried to reverse it to the other hand. Rainbow pass into the backcourt. Hunt to Whitlock. 15 seconds on the ticker. 8.05 to go game clock. Here's Hunt, spinning, will square up. The jumper too strong, grabs his own. Will dribble once, will lift again. This time gets it. So he, he was able to get this off, get his own miss and get the shot up and make it. 
One thing I'm looking at, though, the Falcons are not letting him get that space that he needs. The shooter needs to separate, particularly when you're taking uh, jumpers from the 15, 16, 17 feet range. And that ball's kicked out of bounds by the Falcons. Yeah, right Shores losing the dribble. Every single possession will count from here on out for Cerritos. With only three players able to score in the first half, you would think every single possession is priceless. I would think so because, again, like you said, only three players and Cerritos have scored. And Cerritos has not shown any ability to go on any type of offensive run. There's Hunt spinning. Backing down his defender, fade away, gets a friendly roll. Rim spits it out and then takes it back in. Makes it a 35-26 ball game. Biggest lead of the game for the Huskies at this point. 17.05 to go, So we, second half. There, we're talking about that mid-range game, which is next level for him. Got a friendly roll, oh, push no call. No call there, but Shore's losing the dribble. Gets it over to Chenault. Chenault gets ripped. Good defense by Whitlock. Good awareness, good eye to be able to see the ball and react to it so quickly to get both hands and both arms around it as Cerritos is now going to call a timeout. Yeah, Coach Russ May has seen enough up to this point. 16.50 on the clock, second half, Huskies 35, Cerritos 26, here on Sportsnet, USA.net. In the Mosley era, Huskies are seven-time conference champions under Mosley. East LA is officially a 10-time champion. So we're getting scores. Yeah. Uh, San Diego Miramar is up seven on West LA with 12.54 to go. So then you're known for your upset watch. I think that's fair to call that an upset watch. Still a lot of time left in the game. And West LA, you know, obviously they're the two seed. They're the two seed for a reason. But interesting that they're down seven. Cofield back outside to Whitlock. Here's Hunt. Wouldn't be surprised if he lifts for a jumper. Down low to Phillips. Phillips backing down Barnhill. Left hand hook shot. Going offhand is Phillips. Turned to his inside shoulder to get the space he needed to elevate and, and extend that arm for that hook shot banker. Huskies pulling away here. Only three points this half for Cerritos. And we talked, and I talked about this in the first half. This is kind of the danger zone for, for the Falcons. Like I said, they haven't been able to show any ability to go on an offensive run, and they don't need to start uh, salting away points to the Huskies where Huskies can go up by four, go up by six, eight, ten, and twelve. And we got another score here. Mount Sack is up on Fullerton, 45-44, with 16-16 to go in the second half. Whitlock falling on his bottom. Here's Washington nearly coming up with the steal here at midcourt. That's Shores with 15-40 to go. Shores to Belvins. Belvin losing the dribble, will lift from 13. Barnhill comes up with it, puts it up, can't get it. Ball still being fought for. That's Belvin again, Hunt. Reels it in, so no points other than those first three points by Cerritos. Here's Cofield, reverse lay-in, left to right. Extends the lead, 39-26. 15 minutes, 10 seconds to go. So we're still gonna keep an eye on that San Diego Miramar game, potential upset. Three-point shot, Belvin finally Gosh. responds. Back to a 10-point game. Huskies on top with 15, with 14.50 to go. Excuse me, that's Cofield now. Washington, three, no. And, and you're the Huskies, you know, you don't want to get too comfortable here because even though you've been in control pretty much in this game, it's still only a 10-point lead. You have given up a few threes here and there to Cerritos, and it only takes a couple of those threes to drop to, to take a 10-point lead down to four. There's Shores attacking, kicks out, just throws it out of bounds. 
Coach Russ May of the Falcons <laughs> cashes it out of bounds. Turnover against Cerritos at the 14-20 mark as the Huskies will bring in substitutions. Cofield will take a breather. Washington will take a breather as Callup will be inserted and John Sanders in. Oh, uh, for, uh, looks like um, he's just showing same score, 45-44. Mount Sack is up in, uh, in their playoff game. There's Callup faking, jab stepping. Will attack the baseline, saves it into the hands of Phillips. Phillips backing down, fields the hook shot. This time he goes with a strong hand, right side off the window. And you know when he goes up for those, those he goes up strong, and you like to see that in a big man. You, you go up for those types of shots, the little hook shots, you go up with strong, go up with authority. Another three. Melvin. Like I said, Dan, you're Huskies, you can't relax. You need to give it up too many threes. Callup going up strong. Even though you're in control of this game, you don't want to, that's, the three is designed to be the, to, to be the shot that can catch up, catch up a team that's behind. So, Take away that corner. That's about the fourth time now the Huskies given up a corner three. They need to take, they need to adjust their defensive strategy to take that corner three out out of the arsenal for the Cerritos Falcons. So the Huskies hungry for more despite some hardware being handed out earlier in the week. We had Corey Cofield who was named Player of the Year in the mm -hmm. SEC North. Mm -hmm. But the Huskies hungry for the big trophy, huh? Yes, at this and at this point, Mosley is hungry for the big trophy. Like we could, we could say that, and this is true that this has been what the seventh consecutive season that Mosley has won or won or shared the South Coast Conference North of the year. But it's no, he's not even used asking him about it. It's another corner three. Jalen Shores. That's what Cerritos does well. At times, they could get really streaky from behind the arc. In their previous meeting, they made 10 three-pointers. Here's John Sanders will lift for three. Off the back iron, Hunt comes in. Hunt, jumper good. Nice turnaround jumper from about 17 feet as, Hus uh, as Coach Mosley takes a timeout here. I think he wants a 30. Yeah, with 13.05 left, a 10-point lead for the Huskies. Round two action here on SportsNetUSA.net. 13.05 to go, second half. Leading scorer for the Huskies is now Ty Hunt with eight points. And finally, you got a different player other than the first three players on the stat sheet. Barnhill finally getting three points. Belvin with 13 points for Cerritos. Here's Shores. Against Whitlock, pushing it right side to Chenault. Chenault, the lefty, skips it to the corner. Over to Fields. Fields defended by Phillips. 10 seconds on the ticker. Cerritos will have to hurry here. Oh, we got Office a foul. foul. Got a push off. So you were oh, talking about travel. Oh, yeah, called a travel. So you were talking about the offensive hardware, I mean, offensive hard, the hardware that the team is taking, taking at the end of the season. So. We mentioned Corey Cofield named the uh, SEC North Player of the Year. He was joined in, on, the, on the SEC North first team by Terrell Hunt and Brian Penn Johnson. Uh, on the SEC North second team, you got JT Linkston and the sophomore Des Washington. There's Callup. Gladney pushes it to Sanders. Sanders attacks the lane. The lefty strong finish. He, he got the crease. And from this angle, you can see that wasn't a whole lot, but it was just enough daylight for him to get through and good sweet move by the arm to evade the defender and get the ball up high to over the box. 12-10 left. Shores kicks it to the corner. Chenault three. Whips on that. Cerritos will not back down. Under 12 minutes. Hunt. Hands off to Sanders. Sanders tries to do it again. Does he? No. Loose ball into the hands of Belvin. Now I will say that one way for the Huskies to, to ward off the three, this hot three-point shooting is to keep making their shots. Fields three off the back iron. DC comes down with it. DC attacks the lane, lobs it up. Sanders can't get it. 
into the hands Smart. of Smart. Of Caleb. Smart. He fumbled the ball, but as he's falling out of bounds, he saw his teammate shovel the pass to him at the last second. Yeah, that's a foul on Penn Johnson. Penn, he, Penn Johnson should have should have just stayed on the ground until the Falcons player there went up with it. Until uh, Judge Juice Belvin went up with it because. He's seven one, <laughs> you know. He doesn't need to, he doesn't need to jump. He can just stretch his arm out and bother the shot. So, a bit of mistiming there by Penn Johnson. He caused the foul. First shot, good. Free throw, good. And we're looking for some updates. And uh, Steve Morales is working the laptop and the internet for us, the interwebs, to get some updates. Ten point lead for the Huskies at the eleven twenty mark. Second free throw, no good. And Johnson comes up with it. Here's Gladney into the front court. 11-10 to go. A chance to advance to the Sweet 16. And you know, I'm starting to wonder, you know, with good teams, one thing a good team can do is weather, can take a punch, and they can weather a storm. So we just saw uh, the Falcons hit a bevy of three-pointers, yet the Huskies still have a 10-point lead. So is this the point where the Huskies have weathered the storm uh, as... There's a three-point miss by the Huskies there. Now the rebound to the Falcons. They're Belvin get another to the corner. Swish. Harris gets it. As Cerritos will call timeout with 10.39 to go. Huskies 49, Cerritos 42. Sportsnet, USA.net. Won that game. Here, Cerritos threatening. Also, nine minutes left. Citrus is up on Ventura. Men, 64 to 50. 10-21 uh, left. San Diego City is up on Long Beach, 77 to 58. Also, 12-58 left in the second half. Mount Sac again, we just told you, they're up 49-48 on the number one seed, Fullerton. Oh, we got a women's update. And, and this is, it, and this is oh, as a turnover there by the Huskies. Up ahead, Washington brings down the hammer. 51-42, Huskies. I think that's the first fast, first fast, fast break points the Huskies have earned in this game. The veteran Washington giving the momentum to the Huskies here. Great defense by the Huskies here. Bounce pass inside. And one. Count it. And that's tough. That's, that's tough because the, the Huskies looked like they were about to force uh, some sort of uh, shot clock violation. But at the last minute, Cerritos found the open man streaking to the basket. They got the lay in the go, and they got the foul. So Good give, response by Cerritos Oh, here. yeah, excellent response by Cerritos. Every time it looks like the Huskies are giving, revving up the engine to, uh, to take off, they, they throw down a roadblock or they throw down a speed bump. In this case, three, potential three-point play. Uh, other, in other instances, there were a timely three-pointers to stop Husky runs. This one is super tight game in comparison to conference play where the Huskies won by an average margin of 33 points. They went undefeated in conference at 7-0. Well, also the conference, uh, well, unfortunately, was very weak. Sure. And that's not going to be the case, obviously. Sure. With their playoff opponent. So the Huskies did what they needed to do as three, three throws good. 51-45 with 9-13 left. Plenty of time for the Falcons. Here's Hunt. Gets it into the hands of Gladney. Washington now. Langston will attack the baseline. Kicks out. That's Cofield between his legs. Langston on top. Langston tries to split the defense. Hunt fade away. No. Boykins. Good defense to stand there by Cerritos. This is the point in time where the Huskies, they need to focus on, on their offensive execution. Again, with the guys they got on the, on, the, on the court right now, they need to get inside. They don't really have the outside shooting. Barnhill, good defense by Langston. Barnhill gets it again, a second opportunity. No. Ooh. Langston and Shores nearly go at it. Langston has to be held back by Hunt. Here comes Washington to tell him to calm down. It will be Cerritos basketball with 8.26 to go. And I, was, I think that was just a tough play by both players there, going for the ball hard. 
and which is what you want to see. So, you, but it was incidental. So seven minutes left, and West LA has come back to tie with Miramar at 56 all. Yeah, that was expected. I just don't see San Diego Miramar having it in them. But plenty of time left, I guess, for Miramar to prove us wrong. Here it'll be Cerritos basketball. We got the officiating crew giving giving the reasoning behind the whistle to Mosley and Russ May. So Shores is going to inbound. There's the trigger, looking. Gets it into the hands of Chenault. Splashes that one. Tough Good jumper shot. from 18. Tough shot was well defended. He just kind of gave a little nudge to give himself the room that he needed, but it was still well defended. Washington gets rejected by Harris. 51-47. Falcons back in it. Oh. Harris, three, short, grabs his own. Barnhill will take his time. Gets it over to Belvin. 7.55 left. Falcons have the Huskies back on their heels a little bit here, Dan. Exciting times. The attack. Rejection. Penn Johnson up oh, ahead. Of steal. That's Boykins who comes up with it. To the corner. Shores. In and out. Cofield yeah. gets slapped on his on face head. as he comes down with yeah, the rebound at the 7.34 mark. Huskies 51, 47 for Cerritos. So I was saying earlier, and I, apparently I spoke a little too soon, Dan, that how good teams are able to weather that offensive flurry by their opponent, able to take the opponent's best shot and weather it. So the Huskies, we thought maybe the Huskies had gotten past uh, the Falcons an initial push with the three-pointers, but that's not been the case. So now what was a 10-point lead is now down to four. There's Hunt. Down low to the big man. Penn Johnson, triple team, comes in, finds Washington, who gets fouled by Barnhill on the left side. Seven minutes, 16 seconds to go in a 51-47 ball game. Playoff time, exciting times. How fun is this one? <laughs> Very much fun. And, and you got to be really impressed with Cerritos because, you know, they went down by 10, well, 11, I would say even 12 earlier in this half. And it looked like it was one, that danger zone, but they responded. They, they got a bunch of corner threes. They hit, they hit a bunch of threes. They got the open threes. They hit them. They're the good three-point shooting team that come in here that knocked out a bunch of open looks here. And... Here we are, you know, what looked like the Huskies had, had a chance to, to kind of edge out, push the lead out further. Now well, we got a tight one. Here we are. Oh, what fun it is to ride the Husky sled. <laughs> Let's see if they take a trip. That ball took a trip around the rim before it fell, but thankfully it did fall for the Huskies, so 53-47. We'll see if the Huskies take a trip up north, but first here, second round action, 53-47, 7.05 to go. This is Boykin against Sanders. Penn Johnson comes in. Barnhill will hand off to Boykin. Eight seconds to go, and he's at midcourt practically. He'll have to attack. Boykin spins to Barnhill. Wide open. Too strong there. Two players get tangled up. Jump ball. That should jump go the Huskies' way. Yep. Jump ball is the Husky ball. possession. 6.43 left, partner. Yeah, that's actually a good look by Barnhill. He was open from about 13 feet. Just the ball just rimmed out on the shot. So now the Huskies are inbound in their backcourt. Checking into the game, Juice Belvin, the all SCC South player, out of the game is. Gordon Boykin. Here's Whitlock quickly into the front court. He'll hand off to Sanders. Sanders angles towards the basket, loses it. Washington there to recover with 6.30 the left to go. 15 seconds on the ticker. Whitlock holding it over his head, skips it to Sanders. Sanders fakes, jabs, will lift for three. Too short. Sanders try to come in. Instead, Barnhill comes up with it. That's Belvin. Bounce pass to Chanel. Chanel. Layup, good. 
Yeah, not only was that a good layup, but the control, the ball control he had going up, he had able to elude the, the last minute swipe by the Husky defender. So, and talking to Coach Mosley last night, he said Cerritos has got a shot. They definitely do with 6.01 to go. Mosley was worried. He was concerned about this game. Mentioned Cerritos could get streaky at times and come out of nowhere, and they definitely have at one point in this second half they trailed by as much as 11. All right, so we got some updates. 531 left. Uh, Citrus is up on Ventura, 69 to 60. Oh, we have a final Riverside. Oh, I think we mentioned that before the final Riverside, 88, Copper Mountain, 50, Copper Mountain 59. Uh, 625 left. Uh, San Diego City is up on Long Beach, 80. Now 80 to 65. Looks like San Diego City is pulling away there. Uh, Mount, 942 left second half. Mount Sac is now trailing Fullerton 60 to 58. Uh, we got about seven minutes, still seven minutes left. No update yet. 56 all, seven minutes left. Also, a women's update. And this is important because it'll uh, determine where the women, the Huskies women will play next. Moore Park leading San, Mount San Jacinto 64-47. A steal by Chenault. Chenault gets held up by Wilson. Four fouls apiece, so no one in the bonus just yet with 5.58 to go. Anxious times, nervous times, high anxiety inside the arena. You know, coach, before the season, I uh, spoke to Coach uh, Ken Hunt, and he thought that this was the most talented team they've ever had. And, and, and you can find a lot of people around the interweb saying that this might be the most talented team potentially pound the team in the state of California, but they are young, mostly young. And even with that youth, one of the things you still have to be able to do is execute. It's one thing to have the talent, there's another thing to apply the talent uh, to show the skill. And particularly in, in the college game where the three ball is such a big weapon, it's such a big equalizer. There's Boykin against Gladney. Gets a screen by Barnhill. Penn Johnson comes in to help. Back outside, Harris air balls at this time. It's two of four from behind the arc in this second half. Here's Whitlock with 5.40 to go. We'll hand off to Sanders. Sanders between his legs, good crossover move. Attacking, goes with a strong left hand up on the right side. He gets dropped. So the foul will be on Dorian Harris of Cerritos with 5.32 left. Sanders will go to the stripe. And 5.32 left. Now he's starting to look at the, the clock a bit and say, okay, Huskies need to make these free throws because they need, it's not yet time to start counting possessions. That free throw rims out. But making free throws and trying to keep the lead to five, six, seven points where you're keeping your opponent at least two possessions or more away from you. This is the point of the game where Huskies need to be focused on that. They need to keep uh, Cerritos at it. maybe a half, I wouldn't say a full arm's distance, but maybe a half an arm's distance. Huskies well below their season average. They average 88 points per game here in this one, just 53. They are the sixth best scoring team in the state. And when it comes to a field goal percentage, they're accurate. They're number five in the state as far as a field goal percentage. Shooting the ball 53% here in this one in the first half. They were just shooting 42%, so well below their season averages statistically. Here with 519 to go, that's Shores who will be handling the point guard. Passes it right side to Chenault, back near side Belvin. Once again, it's Shores. That's Barnhill. Five seconds on the ticker. Shores lifts, new. Yeah, that's going to be a loose Barnhill ball foul. Barnhill goes behind yep. the back of Langston at the 4.59 mark. Score remains 53-49. We've been stuck at this score for quite a while. We have. And we talk about the Huskies trying to put together some offensive execution, but their defensive execution, being able to, to, to keep, again, to keep the Falcons from coming within a point or two. Good defense there in that trip. There's Gladney back to Whitlock. Whitlock fakes, drives, gets it out to Sanders for three. Swish. He needed that. 
56 49, 440 left. He had taken a few, that's the first one, he, I believe he got the drop. And so. Huskies not known for three point shooting. At one point in the season, they were ranked 100 out of 101 teams as far as three point makes per game. Now they're up to 97, so not much of an improvement, but when you got size, you don't need the outside shot. No, what we did see in, in last month um, is that whatever, what three point shooting they do have comes off the bench for the Huskies. Mostly in Rich Wilson, he's on the bench right now as we got Gladney, Phillips, Sanders, Langston, and Whitlock on the court for the Huskies as a timeout is called by Coach Mosley. Full timeout with 4.26 to go. 56, 49, Huskies on SportsNetUSA.net. SportsNetUSA.net, your home for Huskies basketball. Round two action of the SoCal Regional continues. Here with 4.26 left in this final half, Huskies on top, 56-49. Dan Grudino alongside Serwin D. Haynes. Yep, and John Sanders, uh, as Serena's called that last time out, he couldn't inbound the ball. But John Sanders just hit a big, big three on the far corner to give the Huskies a three possession game. Not quite just yet to start counting possessions, but it's getting there, especially if the Huskies can keep uh, holding off on defense. Harris, no good. Fields there, gets it, and one. He just squeezed the ball, squeezed, squeezed through the Huskies defenders to get that layup to drop and got contact. Nothing in a while. Believe it or not, that's Fields' second two points, first two points of the game. Mm. He was 0 for 4 up until that shot that went in. Well, it's tough when you're 6'8". Usually when you're 6'8 at this level, you, you know, you're not going to face too many guys to tower over you. Unfortunately, the Huskies do have a guy that, tower, that towers over everybody in Brian Penn Johnson. Uh, that free throw is good, so now the Huskies lead back to four, Dan. 4.05 left. Huskies operating behind the arc right now. That's Gladney. Trying to find a way to get it inside or drove. Splits the defense, tries to lob it up. Langston comes up with it, throws it up. He's fouled. 3.48 to go. I thought the lob maybe was a bit of a prayer. You know, when you want to throw, when you throw the lob up, you want, to, you want the, uh, the guy who's going to jump up for the dunk to have a clear path to the ball. And a couple of times, the Huskies have thrown, trying to throw the lob up, and, but they didn't have a clear path. But that time, that was just the springiness of JT Langston to be able to recover quickly, that quick step, that quick hop that he has, second, first hop, second hop. And so even though he missed, he was able to get his own rebound, and even falling down, put the, put the shot back up and got hit. Langston good on the first one. Langston now with five points. Calling a free throw made here by the Huskies. So now they're up five, with one free throw coming for Langston. Huskies just shooting 63% from the free throw line here this evening. We got two biggies there. Now they're gonna apply some full court press. 345 left. Who will advance to the Sweet 16? Shores back outside of Harris. That's Chenault now. Chenault attacking from the wing to the lane. The dish to Harris. Harris with the mismatch. We'll go back outside to Belvin. Belvin from the free throw area back on top to Chenault. That's Shores to Belvin. Belvin for three, way off on that attempt. 315 left. That was a good defensive series by the Huskies. That's, you know what, I'm telling, I'm telling Eli, you know what, defend that three-point line. Make there, you got the big man to, de to, to defend the paint. You tell your guards, your wings, defend the three-point line. Dare Cerritos, oh, and that ball was thrown away. Bad turnover there. I'm telling, if I'm Mosley, I'm telling the team, hey, dare, dare Cerritos to drive the lane and get a shot off against your big man. Dare them. 
but don't give up the, the don't give up the perimeter three. Don't give up that corner three. Three minutes to go then. Cerritos will inbound from the far sideline. Falcons still alive. Falcons come into the playoffs as the 10 seed. East LA as the seven. That Shores gets the ball poked out of bounds by Whitlock. I thought maybe uh, uh, Shores might have had a little offhand action before him, kind of create space, but it wasn't called. Instead, uh, Cerritos would inbound the ball. Shores, number one, man. Fullerton, back on top to Mount Sack, 77-69. So that was an upset watch up until now. In this one, here's Belvin with 2.40 left. Shores, back outside. Offensive foul. Damani Whitlock all season long has been able to take the contact and sell the charge. That's like his, I don't know how many he's had, but it's more than I can count. It's probably in the double digits as far as how many charges he's taken this season. And not only is it, is it also, it's always great to have a, a player who's willing to give up the body to be able to draw a, uh, to draw a charge and, and get a turnover. But look at the time, 2.38, what a great time for that to get that turnover, especially after the Huskies uh, turned the ball over on the, on the other end previously. So Coach Mosley will call timeout, a full timeout with 2.36 to go. Huskies 58, Cerritos Falcons 52. This is SportsNetUSA.net. Out of the timeout, Husky basketball with 2.36 to go, 58-52. Here's some scores from around the SoCal region. So when we last told you seven minutes left, West LA was tied with Miramar at 56. Well, over the final seven minutes, West LA outscored Miramar, if I'm looking at this correctly, 23-5. To, to go on to win 79-61. So that means that if ELAC wins today, they hold on to today. Saturday, they're going, they're going out to Culver City, Dan, to play West LA. But they still got 236 left of business to take care of here, don't they? Husky basketball, and Phillips loses it on the sideline in front of his bench. Took his eyes off of it. Which, how do you do when in a situation like that? How do you do that when you know that you're in a bit of a tight game and you need to grab the ball on the sideline? You would think, you know, you need a bit more awareness. Now, he's a big man, he's 6'8", but still, you know, you need to have that awareness. Cerritos down six. They, they've been cold for a bit from behind the arc, but don't count them out. That's Belvin going around the screen, attacking the lane. Gets rejected by Phillips. Phillips. Volleyball spiking it out of bounds with 2.11 to go. You know, here's a, here's a sign. I don't, if you're a Cerritos fan, you don't, you don't like. Past few possessions, Cerritos has been hesitant to pull the trigger on the, on the perimeter. That's the ninth block this ball game for the Huskies. Oh, and that ball is intercepted. That's the lob inside. No good. Sanders recovers it. 2.05 left. Huskies will try to milk it here. Cross court pass near side to Sanders. Sanders stops at the free throw area. A reset now. Go back, go back. Gladney, Euro step, lobs it up. Loose ball, Langston again. Eight seconds on the ticker. Langston goes up, loses it. Four seconds to go. Lang That's Gladney, no. Phillips with the put back. Oh, that one gets poked out of bounds by the Huskies with 1.33 to go. So the Huskies came up empty on that trip, but they had about uh, four chances. But I would be too discouraged because in, in that exchange, they chewed off about 30, over 30 seconds of clock here. So now you look at that timeout, the previous time was 2.16 left with a six point hand. Now the Huskies have a six point lead with under now under a minute 30 to go. So now that's even more pressure on Cerritos even though the Huskies did not score on that trip. Shores against Whitlock. That's Belvin to Harris. Left alone, Shores. No. Gladney reels it in. A minute 12 to go. 
Now the Huskies can drain a little bit more clock here. They, I feel like they still need one good shot. They just get one good No look throw. pass to Phillips. Phillips, short on that attempt. One of his Phillips is a little tired. Langston and the Huskies call time out with 57.5 to go. Huskies on top, 58-52. We'll step aside. Back inside the South Gym for the final 57.5 to go. 58-52. And Dan, what I was telling you during the, uh, during, so what I was telling you Dan uh, during the timeout is that the Huskies are winning this game right now, not necessarily because of offensive execution, well, not really. And even though the defense has been good, but really what it is is they've been quicker to the ball. That's not always something you hear uh, a term used in basketball, but they're, quick ball, they're quicker to the ball with loose balls, they're quicker to the ball with, on the boards, on both sides of the boards. So they're extending, they're adding possessions, they're extending possessions, and they're just salt, slowly just salting away that time. It's, only, it's almost like playing a time of possession game with football, except they keep getting the ball again. <laughs> It'll be Husky basketball out of the timeout. The trigger will be Gladney. And I think if the Huskies score here, could potentially be the throw of close on this one. The score here would make it a three possession game under a minute to go. A rainbow pass on top to Langston. They get it into the hands of Whitlock, one of the tougher players I've ever seen. Whitlock is fouled. A reach in, actually a push there. Yeah, sure, it's got called. She was trying to, uh, trying to keep uh, Gladney from making that turn towards the basket. So that'll leave 51.3 to go, and a chance for the one and one now. One and one coming up for Damani Whitlock. Out the Huskies at the free throw line. So what would be crazy here? If Whitlock makes the first free throw and misses it, but the Huskies get the offensive rebound. Look who they got, uh, JT Langston and Corey Cofield, two guys who are very springy, who have a nose for the ball. So you got two guys who are good who are good offensive rebounders in there. He makes the first, you know, then <laughs> we'll see what happens. Yep. No good. Oh, last touch by the 20 jersey of Dorian Harris. Husky basketball again with 49.4 to go. And who caused that? Langston. <laughs> <laughs> Mosey knew what he was doing, putting Langston and Cofield in there. There's Gladney looking. Finds Whitlock in the corner. 47 seconds to go now. You know what? If I'm Cerritos, maybe I'll think about fouling. Whitlock attacks. Can't get that layup. Loose ball. Recovered by Chenault there, 30 seconds to go. Cerritos has got to find a three, and they need to find a three soon. Huskies know that, so they're going to try and keep, keep, keep guard that perimeter. The drive by Shores. Good defense. No. Foul against the Cofield. Yeah. That's the South Coast Conference Player of the Year. Now, obviously, you know, a lot of times they say that when you are uh, when you're ahead and you end up fouling, you got 16.8 .8 seconds left. When you're ahead at this point and you're fouling, as it's a cardinal sin. But you look, you look at the buffer here, it's 58-52. So even if they make both, it's still a two-possession game. And Cerritos, that, that free throw's missed. Big miss there, Dan. So you still get a, a two-possession game with one possession left. And it, 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 eventually the Huskies gonna get the ball and you're gonna have to foul them. The Huskies gonna, you, you're you gotta foul. That second free throw drops. And a full timeout call by Russ May, head coach of Cerritos. 16.8 seconds remain. 
in this ball game. 58 for the Huskies, 53 for Cerritos. Sportsnet, USA.net. So West LA awaits the winner of this one. Half of the Sweet 16 has already been decided. Will the Huskies punch their ticket into the Sweet 16? 16.8 seconds to do so. Indeed. And again, that West LA, they were actually down for, a, for a, maybe more than a half in that game. I know, Dan, you didn't think that would be an upset special because West LA is that good. What's really scary, though, like, a, like we said, they outscored Miramar 23 to five over the last seven minutes. Five point ball game here with 16.8 to go. Cerritos will apply the full court press. Can the Huskies break it? Instant whistle. Belvin's all over Sanders. If you look on the floor, all free throw shooters, all ball handlers for the Huskies, except Langston. Yep. Smart, you, you, need, you want your ball handlers, you want guys that are not gonna, that can handle uh, tight defensive pressure with their dribbling skills and passing skills and be heady heads up dribblers, heads up passers. They can try to break the press. Also, you, need, you want your guys that can, your best free throw shooters out there, which usually are guards, guards and wings. A lot of late game adjustments, uh, substitutions. You're going to see a little bit of offense, defense most likely. Here we still got a hold up because the substitutions are mixing things up here. Com causing confusion, you got three players who will be checking in for Cerritos after the horn. Mm, no good attempt. on that first attempt by Sanders. And, you know, th these are things uh, that, thankfully, the Huskies, with their talent and their athleticism, they were able to, to, to pull off, look like they're on their way to close 16, 22 se two seconds left. But against better teams, against potentially that West LA matchup, you know, you worry about things like them not being able to make their free throws, enough of their free throws against a, a better team where they need the points. So hopefully, you know, the Huskies will be able to focus. Well, of course, they still have to focus for 16.2 more seconds here, Dan. Yeah, Cerrito still alive with their ability to shoot the three ball. Don't count them out. Nope. So again, the Huskies have got a clue now. Now, now they, they've been able to tighten up their defense on the perimeter. But it, it Shores, coast to coast, gets it. Makes it a 59-55 ball game as Russ May will call timeout. We'll stay on the air here with 11 seconds to go. And that was good quickness there. And not, a, not the easiest shot. I mean, he was open. He, had to, he made a beeline to the basket, but he had to elude a couple of defenders to do so. So, so if you're not going to take the three, then the next best thing to do is to get a quick two. And that's what Cerritos did. Now, will it be quick enough? 11 seconds left. The Huskies going to inbound the ball. First uh, priority is to inbound the ball cleanly, anticipate the foul. And then the Huskies got to make their free throws. A valiant effort by Cerritos with 11 seconds to go. All time against Coach Mosley. Russ May is two and four, two and five. Two and five. Yeah. All time here inside the arena. The Falcons are 0 and three. That looks to hold if the Huskies could hold here for the final 11 seconds. And this is where, you know, you look at it as 11 seconds, but Huskies need to mentally stay in it. They need to mentally focus. They, need, they don't need any, any foolish turnovers here. As Near steal. Langston goes in, baseball sliding towards it. Oh, so J JT Langston in the front court does the smart thing of calling timeout with 8.2 to go. We get a referee's discussion here in front of the Cerritos bench. 
one ref called timeout for White. Yep, they're going to give the timeout to Elac. Because one ref called timeout to Elac, another, and the other ref called jump ball. So it's actually, so it's going to be a 30 second timeout by the Huskies. Very fortuitous. Smart timeout yes. by JT Langston and the Huskies. And, you know, the referee on the far side in the Huskies' front court saw it first. And so, he, so even as the referees, the two referees in the back court, they were, de they were deciding, and one was about to say jump ball, the referee up front saying, hey, no, the timeout white, timeout white. So thankfully, he was able to overrule the jump ball, and the Huskies keep the ball. We always say it, the Zebras know best. Yeah, and he did that time, thankfully, for the Huskies. <laughs> You so take it when the break goes your way, right, Dan? <laughs> all day. 59-55 in favor of your Huskies. The pride of East L.A. trying to move on to the Sweet 16. Just 8.2 seconds left. So this inbound now is very important. Huskies need to get a clean inbound. Clean release. Oh, it's straight oh, into the hands pass. of Chenault. Chenault attacks. Rebound by Cerritos. Loose ball. Saved into the hands. Wow. Huskies escape. They move on to the next round. They enter the Sweet 16 with a 59-55 victory over the Cerritos Falcons. The Huskies move to 25-4. They're now on a 17-game win streak. What a game. <laughs> You know, knowing Coach Mosley the way I have, I have you got to feel like he's not quite happy with the way the Huskies closed that game out. Obviously, you take the win. You'll take the win all day. But you have to wonder how happy he is with the way the Huskies closed that game out. They did cause a turn. They did uh, commit a turnover, trying to inbound the ball with 8.2 seconds left. But thankfully, time was on their side. They were able to defend the last-minute uh, lay-in attempt. They got the miss. They were able to bat the ball around. They were able to knock the ball out and basically uh, kind of do a volleyball uh, or football throw of the, of the ball, to knock it away from everybody uh, to a pass half court. So West L.A. awaits the yes. Huskies, the highly anticipated matchup, West versus East. East. LACCD versus LACCD with big-time so stakes. West L.A., the number two seed. East L.A. advances as the number seven seed. Doubleheader action was exciting. Women's basketball <laughs> was even more exciting. Delilah Kimball Gray won with a buzzer beater shot. That was witnessed here on Sportsnet USA. Also witnessed here, the Huskies will advance to the Sweet 16, the third round of the SoCal Regional. If they win in the next game against West LA, they move on to the state tournament, a three-day tournament up at West Hills, Lemoore, California, where the state championship will be crowned on Sunday, March 13th. So for all our sponsors here on Sportsnet USA for DG Sports Marketing and Broadcasting, helping your company find a sound path for NutriShop of Monterey Park. It's your sports nutrition, weight loss, and vitamin experts. And by Rigo's Move-In and Storage. Set up your next move with Yelp's five-star move-in service. With Rigo's Move-In and Storage, we've got your back. So long till Saturday, right? Yeah, till Saturday, big time matchup. East versus West, LACCD versus LACCD for the right to go to the state championship. Up in tournament. West Hills, Lamore. Good night. Good night, folks.